Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be participating in this wonderful virtual expo. And my topic for today's session is end-to-end -end performance monitoring for Citrix Cloud. Before we begin, a very quick introduction to EG Innovations, if you have not heard of us. At EG Innovations, we develop application and infrastructure performance monitoring solutions that aim to make the job of system administrators, IT managers, and architects, and anyone else in IT operations easier. Citrix and virtual desktop technologies have been a key focus for us for many years. Our solutions are purpose-built for Citrix and VDI and incorporate expertise from working with some of the largest deployments of these technologies. Our solutions are Citrix Ready certified. We're a global technology partner of Citrix. And Citrix themselves have been using our tools uh, to monitor the infrastructure they set up to support their keynotes and hands-on labs at their Synergy and Summit conferences yearly. With that quick background, uh, let's get to the topic at hand, which is performance monitoring for Citrix Cloud. In general, cloud adoption has been growing tremendously over the years. And as we see uh, over the years, we've also seen many of our customers adopting Citrix Cloud um, aggressively. The charts and numbers here are from Citrix's latest financial results, and they indicate that Citrix Cloud accounts for over 10% of Citrix's annual revenue, and cloud revenue is growing for them at over 40% year on year. Compared to a traditional Citrix deployment, Citrix Cloud brings a number of benefits. Essentially, with Citrix Clouds, you don't have to deploy the ADCs or Netscalers, storefronts, delivery controllers, or your SQL data store on-prem. The entire control plane on top is hosted by Citrix in their cloud. The resource plane, which is your server VDAs, desktop VDIs, is either on-prem or it can be in your own cloud in infrastructure. This means that with Citrix Cloud, you have fewer components to manage, Citrix operates in man the control plane and manages upgrades, patches, et cetera. And you, the Citrix admin, just have to handle the resource plane components. So Citrix Cloud does ease the burden on the administrator. At the same time, an important question to ask is whether the move to Citrix Cloud means that you don't have to monitor the performance of your services anymore. Unfortunately, the answer is a resounding no. Users will continue to contact you, the Citrix admin, when they notice slowness. You will then need to check your resource plane elements to see if they're causing an issue. You'll need to check if there's anything wrong with your cloud connector um, or if it's logging something that indicates there is an issue. The problem could also be with the network connecting you to the Citrix cloud or in the Citrix control plane itself. The fact that you don't have complete visibility anymore means that problem troubleshooting is going to be more challenging than before. There are several tools available for monitoring the accessibility and performance of Citrix cloud services. Now, for a start, you can check the Citrix cloud portal status.cloud.com. Citrix posts regular updates if they have known problems that are impacting their cloud services, but typically only major outages that affect many customers are reported here. Now, if you notice, Citrix's SLAs for Citrix Cloud are based on availability. So if there are performance issues, these are mostly responded to reactively. And often customers have to report these issues for Citrix to investigate further. As part of your cloud subscription, you also get access to Citrix Director in the cloud. This gives you insights into session usage, activity, log on times, and such. But you don't really get the end-to-end -end insights that you need to troubleshoot what is causing slowness. Is it your infrastructure? Could it be your hypervisor, your storage? Or is it the network connectivity? Or is it the cloud itself? A new introduction to the Citrix workspace portfolio is Citrix Analytics for Performance. This is mainly a way to aggregate metrics collected by director and provide user experience data for you to understand how many users are happy and how many are not. Analytics does not provide you any additional insight for troubleshooting performance issues. So let's see what 
the main performance monitoring needs are for customers adopting Citrix Cloud. First and foremost, it's important to have ways to continuously and proactively monitor user experience. After all, the success and failure of any digital workspace is based on user experience. By monitoring your service 24 by 7, you can learn about problems before your users do. Now, once you know that there is a performance issue, the immediate, the immediate focus tends towards what is causing the issue. So monitoring every layer of your service becomes important. And when you get the data from all these different tiers, you'll need help determining where is the root cause of your problem. So that's really my requirement number three. Now, finally, using all of the data that is collected by a monitoring tool, you can get insights in for right-sizing, optimization, and capacity planning. I'm going to show you with a live demo how the EG Enterprise solution from EG Innovations helps you address these four main Citrix cloud performance monitoring requirements. Now, to monitor user experience, EG Enterprise includes a Citrix logon simulator. Uh, this simulator can work both for your on-premise as well as your cloud deployments. It's basically a software robot that is pre-programmed to simulate logons to measure if your logons are successful and how long they take. And by tracking all of the steps of the logon process, it can actually even tell you which step is causing slowness. There are three main steps that the logon simulator performs. It opens a browser automatically, enters your cloud URL, waits for the page to load and enters the username and password and logs you into Citrix Cloud. Once the logon succeeds, it checks to see if the application or desktop of interest has been enumerated, clicks on the application or desktop and launches it, and ultimately logs out from the session and repeats this process all over again. The frequency at which it can run can be specified by you. You can also run the simulator from multiple locations to check the performance of your Citrix cloud environment. Now let's see how the logon simulator works in action. So this is a dashboard. I'm now logged into the EG Enterprise console. And in this case, I'm simulating access to five applications and desktops. You see the applications or desktops I'm simulating access to on the left-hand side. You see the URL we are connecting to, the user we are connecting as, and you see the results of the simulation on the right-hand side. You can see if the web access worked, whether we were able to log in, how long it took for us to log in, whether we were able to see the desktop of interest, and then how long did it take for the desktop to launch. You can set thresholds so that you can get alerts where the green means things are working well, different shades of red indicate uh, slowness. You, to look at the simulation in more detail, I've clicked on the magnifying glass, and you get to see the overall simulation and how it works. The total simulation in this case took 118 seconds. You can see where time was spent on, with the breakdowns that you see on the side. You can see how long it took to open the browser, how long to connect to your cloud portal, how long for authentication, how long did it take to enumerate, and for the session establishment, and ultimately for the desktop session to launch. So looking at the breakdowns, you can get an idea of where the slowness is and start to investigate the problem further. Now, in the latest release of EG Enterprise, we've actually added the ability to, for you to see screenshots. If a particular step of the process failed, we will automatically take a screenshot. And if you click on the X mark here, you'll see the screenshot of the failed transaction indicating, and from there you can clearly see why the logon failed. This can greatly help with logon troubleshooting. Also new in this release, we've added support for different forms of authentication and identity management. In addition to supporting Netscaler access, we support access through F5's big IP. We also have added support for Active Directory Federation services, and Okta identity management. To get more insights into the performance of the control plane, we rely on APIs supported by Citrix Cloud. 
So monitoring of the control plane is agentless. We make API calls to this cloud delivery controller to get detailed statistics about machines in use, connection failures, log on performance, and such. With the latest release of our products, we've achieved parity between what we offer for an on-prem Citrix delivery controller versus one which is cloud-based. To see the performance of the Citrix control plane, I'm going to go back to my browser window. I'm going to zoom in to one of the delivery controllers that we are monitoring here. On the left-hand side, you'll see the type of metrics that we collect for the Citrix cloud control plane. Here you can monitor the different delivery groups that are configured, the applications that are published, and user activity, all from a brokering perspective. Looking at the users layer on the left-hand side, you can see that we are tracking a number of statistics. You can see that we track user logon performance, connection failures, session states, and such. User logon performance is where you can see logon breakdowns for individual users. So there are three, two users who are currently logged into this Citrix site in the last five minutes. And for each user, you can see how long did the logon take and what was the breakdown of the logon time. At the delivery group level, you can see if any of the machines have failed or if they've gone into an unregistered state. So you can get alerted to such kind of situations. Um, so this way you don't have to go to your Citrix Studio or director to see the details of your control plane. You can monitor both the control plane and the resource plane from one single console. So coming, so we've seen what we do for the control plane. Let's quickly take a look at what we do for the resource plane. Monitoring of the resource plane uses a combination of agents and agentless monitors. Monitoring of the network devices, hypervisors, storage is agentless, but we go agent-based for the core Citrix components, the provisioning servers, server VDAs, cloud connector, and so on. New in EG Enterprise 7.1, our latest version, is the ability to go deeper into logon performance with the ability to track user input delay, something that is supported from Windows 2019. Now I'm going to focus on metrics reported by the agent on the Citrix VDA. I'm going to zoom into one of the Citrix VDAs that we are monitoring here. And on this VDA, I'm going to focus on session startup, which is really log on monitoring that metrics that we receive from the Zenapp VDAs. This screen that I've brought up here is a single consolidated view that provides both the director's view of performance, which is what you're seeing from the brokering or the control plane, where we can see that it took 48 seconds for the user to log on. You can see a breakdown of the processing time on the VDA. Out of the 48 seconds, 41 seconds was spent on the VDA. Server-side processing is telling us it was 41.28 seconds. And you can see the breakdown into different components on the VDA. So 37 seconds was spent for group policy processing. By clicking on the magnifying glass, you can actually see the exact CSEs, client-side extensions that were processed. And you can see that group policy drive maps is actually the problematic step, which is taking about 36 seconds. So this way we give you a 360 degree view of logon performance, both from the brokering perspective and from the VDA perspective. Now going back to my slide deck again, uh, besides the detailed logon metrics, we've also incorporated monitors for new Citrix components introduced with Citrix Virtual Apps and Desktop 7. When activities are tracked by our agents, we also can monitor the performance of app layering now, and we also have new monitors for SD-WAN, Citrix Federated Authentication Services, and session recording servers. All of these additions are intended to provide insights into the performance of each and every Citrix tier and the supporting infrastructure. So there is no guesswork during troubleshooting. Ultimately, the goal of all these monitoring capabilities is to help you pinpoint quickly when a performance issue happens, what is the cause? Is it the client? Is it the server? Is it the cloud platform? Is it the network? 
Now with the EG Enterprise, you have a quick way to answer this question. Um, this screen that I'm bringing up is a topology map that shows how your entire service is laid out. Here you see all the components involved in supporting Citrix Cloud. You can see the crowd control plane elements and the resource plane elements on the same screen. You get a high level view of what's working and what's not. Anything which is green is working well. You have a couple of VDAs that are having issues. Picking on one of these VDAs, you can drill down to see what is going on. And in this case, you'll see that one of the users logged into this VDA is experiencing some kind of a problem. User John, if you look at on the right hand side, you'll see his screen refresh latency is over eight seconds, which is very slow. For good performance, a rule of thumb is 100 milliseconds or less in refresh latency. Here it looks like this user is seeing very poor performance. Another new metric that we have been able to glean with Citrix Zen App and Zen Desktop 7 is the network latency from the user terminal to your Zen App servers. And in this case, the, the metric is reporting that it's taking over seven seconds on the network. So the cause of your problem is not the fact that there's something wrong with Citrix, but the fact that there, there is really some issue with the user's network link, which is impacting performance. So this way you can troubleshoot and identify whether any issue reported is really a Citrix issue or something else in your environment that is impacting Citrix. Now, all of the metrics that EG Enterprise collects are stored in a historical database for later analysis. You can then re run reports analyzing performance across servers or over time. And one particular use case is for historical data to be able to determine when you migrate from one Citrix version to another, or if you're considering to move from on-premise to cloud, you can run a report that compares the performance before the move and after the move. And from this, you can actually quantify the performance improvements that you've achieved as part of the migration. So in this quick presentation, um, I've covered the four main ways in which EG Enterprise helps monitor Citrix Cloud. We've seen how with synthetic and real user monitoring, you can get a handle on user experience. The drill downs into the control plane and the resource plane give you an idea of how you can monitor heterogeneous tiers with one console. And the topology views are the basis for root cause diagnosis. Now, before I end, I want to highlight that with our latest release, we've also made EG Enterprise easily accessible as a SaaS-based service from the cloud. You can register over the web and start monitoring your Citrix on-prem and cloud deployments in just a few minutes. To register for the SaaS service, go to eginnovations.com slash cloud. And if you'd like to reach us for additional details, uh, here are uh, the places where you can reach us by email, phone, or over the web. Eric, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity and putting together this wonderful virtual expo. Back to you again.